cool things, and uh, he has uh, had first-person experience with a lot of uh, tradition bearers of old-time music, and um, I just love following him around and hearing what he's got to say. And it's been uh, extra hard this week because he broke both his toes, so... Uh. <laughs> now wait, Charmaine. <laughs> I've got ten of them. Huh? Oh, okay, all right, all right. We still have eight, so follow you around. She said I broke both my toes. <laughs> I mean, You're just a two-toed Riley, right? I mean, what kind of hillbilly you think I am? <laughs> and which foot do you think they're on? <laughs> the two toes I have. <laughs> oh, me. Well, good morning, everybody. It is great to be here in the community room again in Keith House. I've not gotten to do anything in this room in so long. Uh, we're getting closer and closer all the time to being regular real people again. I don't recognize any of you unless you have your mask on. Because in the situations around campus where people get to take off their masks or outside, you know, I see people and I go, oh wow, I wonder who they are. Never met them before. But then when they put their mask on, I'm like, oh yeah, you're in my class. <laughs> These are the people I see six hours a day, but I only see them from here up, you know. I'm surprised that no one has made a mask with a, a Velcro closure that you could just pop down, have a sip, and then put the Velcro back on. I think I've actually seen a thing. I've seen zippers, yeah. but I haven't seen Velcro. Yeah. Well, I'm going to start off this morning. A sort of a bluesy old time tune that um, that comes from sort of over in my neck of the woods around Surrey County, North Carolina, and I think it's rather appropriate. It's uh, it's called Chilly Winds. It's cold out here for those of you who live in other places. Well, but some of you live in other places where you laugh at our cold. But that's okay. We think it's cold.
sun never shines, I'm gonna skid on that cold ice and snow. Thank you. You know, old time musicians do not typically see 7.45 a.m. from this side. We go all the way around through to it, but to stop in the middle and wake up and come, it's, 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 it's early. It's hard to play banjo at 7.45 a.m. <laughs> But I'd rather enjoy it. I might start doing this on a regular basis at home. Now I'm going to change tuning. One of the things that, that a lot of people don't know about, about uh, old time claw hammer banjo is that old time banjo players tune their instrument to whatever key you're going to be playing in. So I was just playing in G and I've tuned to C now. Because this next song I want to be able to sing in C. Now, I'm a banjo maker. I, I make banjos. I made this banjo. I've been making banjos since 1995. And it's because I didn't have enough money to afford to buy one, but I did have some wood. So I said, what have I got to lose, you know? Uh, I carved away everything that didn't look like a banjo, and then bam, there you go, I had one. Um, but I, I work with a lot, of, a lot of different kinds of musicians. I work with singer-songwriters and old-time musicians and, 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 and a, a variety. I work with Cajun musicians, blues musicians, sacred steel musicians, um, and but I can tell you, singer-songwriters do not adhere to the same rules uh, about tunings as old-time musicians do. So I was in Greensboro, North Carolina, one night with a couple of friends of mine, and they're singer-songwriters, and we were doing a little show, and at the end of the show, well, that night, every song they did was in a different tuning, so I had to retune all night long. I mean, every one, man, those tuners got hot. It was just like every, every tune, a different, different key. Um, <clears throat> got done, I went to lay my banjo down, and this little lady comes walking up to me, and she says, now, honey, that was awfully nice. I said, well, thank you, ma'am. I'm glad you enjoyed it. She said, one thing, though, you might consider buying yourself a better banjo, one you don't have to tune so much. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Strangely, I didn't care too much whether she enjoyed the show after that point or not. <laughs> not true. Uh, the story's true. I did care whether she liked it. People just don't understand, and you can't, you can't hold people responsible for what they don't know. And the more you know, I believe it's that. This song uh, comes from, it's actually a bluegrass song. It's called Things in Life. And it comes from West Virginia, from a West Virginia bluegrass banjo player whose name was Don Stover. Uh, Don not only was a marvelous bluegrass banjo player, but he was an incredible claw hammer banjo player. So he kinda, he's one of those 
old bluegrass musicians who had his toes, both of them, in, in, <laughs> in both sides of the musical uh, arena, you know, bluegrass and old time. And people say, well, what's the difference? Well, bluegrass was a commercial form of country music started by Bill Monroe in, in around 1939, 1940. And his band was called the Bluegrass Boys because they were from Kentucky, the bluegrass state. So therefore you had bluegrass music and the entire style grew from that. He was playing old time music that he learned in his community and took that music, put it in higher keys, played it faster, and played it with rock and roll attitude. And then you had bluegrass music. And the, the old time music is the music that bluegrass grew from or grew out of. This is called Things in Life. We often lose some things in life that make us wonder why. Look up, look down 
Surrey County area. It's also played in, in uh, southwestern Virginia, right across the, the state line uh, from North Carolina and Virginia. Um, so Grayson County and Surrey County are back to back like that. Grayson County up here and Surrey County down here. And this is sort of over, over northeast of here uh, in the sort of extreme western foothills of, of the Blue Ridge. Um, and that's kind of where my family's from. They're from, from around Surrey County, Allegheny County, which is actually in the Blue Ridge, and then you have the Foothills, which is Surrey County, uh, and, and the, it's, we're, it's a pretty place. But the, the regional music there uh, is kind of known as either Galax style in Virginia or Round Peak style in in North Carolina. They're very similar, they're just different. They, they kind of play, they play the same tunes, they just sort of attack them differently. And you, you have differences in styles between musicians that might live no more than eight miles apart. Um, there was a, a great recording uh, that a friend of mine did years ago. He went up into to Carroll County, Virginia, and he found two families, the Sheeler family and the Kimball family. They both played old time music from the region uh, of Carroll County, Virginia, where they live. They both, both families played old time music. Everybody in the family played. They lived eight miles apart. They'd never met each other. They'd never heard each other play music. Uh, and they, they'd never played music together. They played a lot of the same tunes and their styles were entirely different. Um, so, so those hills and hollers can, can uh, create separation while, while having unity, you know? But this tune comes from over around Surrey County and Grayson County, Virginia, and they call it Backstep Cindy. Now there was always a way, I'm going to play you two little versions of it. There was a way that they played it in the old days, but you'd go visit these old musicians and they would say, now right here's the right way to play this, you can't play it no different, if you play it different you're playing it wrong. But then a gentleman I used to spend a lot of time with, Tommy Gerald, Thomas Jefferson Gerald, he was, he was up in his 80s when I was... In, in my mid-teens and spending time with him, learning music from him. He would say, now here's the old way they played Backstep Cindy. But then he'd say, he would play the, the other version and he'd say, well now here's the new way. After my daddy and Tony Lowe and Charlie Lowe changed it. So after sitting there and telling you, you have to play it one way and you can never change it, he then explains how his father and two of his uncles changed the tune. So it's hard to understand as a young man what you should do. Uh, so I just played. Backstep Cindy. Here's the old way. Thank you. 
students one the other day about uh, about uh, what do you call it when you when when a hundred banjo players go over a cliff a good start <laughs> yeah enough bad jokes. Why do firemen wear red suspenders? Why? To hold up their pants. Oh. A gentleman on an air, I was flying home from Norway and, and a gentleman decided that he had to tell me this joke because he was seated in the seat with me um, and just had to tell me how much he was missing his nine-year-old daughter, who was four rows back. <laughs> so he had to tell me her favorite joke. But it stuck with me, didn't it? So there you go. I 
just did. Why do firemen wear red suspenders? Well, you told the story after the joke. I know. I was explaining the joke. Deborah, I was explaining the joke. No, I, I didn't tie them together very well. Well, I'm going to play you one more song. And, and it's one that I, that I often like to play, and because I do play it often. So that would mean that I kind of like it. But it's, it's, a, it's a song that comes from Ola Bell Reed. Uh, Ola Bell Reed was a woman from Ash County, North Carolina. She grew up playing old-time music in Ash and Allegheny County. Uh, those two counties adjoin. They're separated by the New River, which flows north, for those of you who are interested in such things. But the New River flows north, just like the Nile. Um, but, but Ola Bell discovered as, as a young woman that she had, she had the talent of not only playing old-time music, but she could write songs. So she wrote songs about her community, about people she knew, situations that happened in that community, she became a storyteller, someone who, who, who would pass the information around in the community. And that's what, that's what ballads were originally. You know, the old ballads that we have in southern Appalachia came from, from uh, you know, England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales. They were, they were cautionary tales and, and ways of conveying information before there was print or before there was, uh, you know, the Jerry Springer show or, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. But... But she wrote songs, and this particular one is called Undone in Sorrow. Now, it's that age-old story of boy meets girl, falls in love with the girl, the girl falls in love with the boy. The boy goes away to earn his fortune and then decides to return, and he's going to marry her when he gets back, only to discover that when he returns, she's passed away. It's a sad little song, and I hope you all enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks for being here this morning. It's been a pleasure. It's been really fun. Still. 
Riches.